current electricity electric current current is defined as the rate of flow of charge through any cross section of a conductor if a net charge q passes through any cross section of the conductor in time t then the current i is given by i equals q by t resistance r the resistance of a conductor is defined as the ratio of the potential difference v across it to the current i flowing through the conductor that is resistance that is equal to r is given by v by i in si system the unit of resistance is ohm and is represented by the symbol above ohm definition the resistance of a conductor is 1 ohm if when a potential difference of 1 volt is applied across its ends a current of 1 ampere flows through the conductor that is 1 ohm equals 1v by 1a ohm's law ohm's law applies to electric circuits it states that the current passing through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the potential difference voltage drop or voltage across the two points and inversely proportional to the resistance between them the mathematical equation that describes this relationship is i proportional to v or i equals v by r limitations of ohm's law although ohm's law has been found valid over a large class of materials there do exist materials and devices used in electric circuits where the proportionality of v and i does not hold the deviations broadly are one or more of the following types as shown above temperature dependence of resistivity the resistivity of a material is found to be dependent on the temperature the resistivity of a material conductor is approximately given by the formula given where rho t is the resistivity at temperature t and rho not is the same as the reference temperature t not alpha is called the temperature coefficient of resistivity this relation implies that a graph of rho t plotted against t would be a straight line at temperatures much lower than 0 degree celsius the graph however deviates considerably from a straight line this relation can be used approximately over a limited range of t around any reference temperature t not when the graph can be approximated as a straight line some materials like nichrome exhibit a very weak dependence of resistivity with temperature and like metals the resistivities of semiconductors decreased with increasing temperatures a typical dependence is shown above combination of resistors series when the negative pole of the first cell is connected to the positive pole of the second cell the negative pole of the second cell is connected to the positive pole of the third cell and so on and finally the external resistance r is connected in series between the positive pole of the first cell and the negative pole of the last cell such a combination of cells is called a series combination of the cells in the figure for simplicity here we consider all the cells to be identical each having emf epsilon and internal resistance r combination of resistors parallel when all poles of different cells are connected together and the negative poles are connected together and the res external resistance r is connected across the positive and negative terminals such a combination is called a parallel combination of cells this is shown in the figure emf of a cell in the external circuit current that is a positive charge flows from p to q via conductor ab but inside the cell the same positive charge has to move from a lower potential to a high potential to do this the cell must be able to do work on the charge the energy to do this work is derived from the chemical process inside the cell the influence that makes the charge move from a lower potential to a higher potential is called the electromotive force and is denoted by epsilon the emf of the cell is defined as the work done in carrying a unit positive charge through the complete circuit including the charge flow inside the cell the emf is measured in the units of joule per coulomb terminal voltage when no current flows through the cell the circuit is said to be an open circuit this is shown in the figure in such a case the potential difference pd across the terminals of the cell called terminal voltage v will be equal to the emf epsilon of the cell this is because no current flows through the electrolyte and hence there is no potential drop across the internal resistor r a voltmeter connected across the terminals of a cell in an open circuit reaches the emf of the cell that is in an open circuit terminal voltage v equals emf epsilon now if an external resistance r is connected across the two terminals of the cell as in the figure the current flows in the closed circuit through both external resistance r and internal resistance small r 
If I is the current in the circuit, it is calculated as follows. Now, due to the current flow, there will be a potential drop of IR across the cell. As a consequence, now the terminal voltage will be V equals epsilon minus IR. An ideal cell is that which has got no internal resistance. That is, small r equals zero for an ideal cell. However, an ideal cell is only a concept and in practice it is not possible. Kirchhoff's first law. Kirchhoff's first law states that the sum of the currents flowing into a junction is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of the junction. That is, I1 plus I2 plus I4 equals I3 plus I5. This law is a consequence of the law of conservation of charge. Electric charge is never accumulated at one point in a circuit. This law may also be stated as the algebraic sum of electric currents at a junction in a circuit is zero. That is, I1 plus I2 minus I3 plus I4 minus I5 equals zero. Kirchhoff's second law. Kirchhoff's second law states that the sum of the EMF around a loop is equal to the sum of the potential drops around the loop. This law is a consequence of the law of conservation of energy. Kirchhoff's second law may also be stated as, in any closed circuit, the algebraic sum of all the potential differences is zero. Potentiometer a potentiometer is a variable tapped resistor that can be used as a voltage divider. A potentiometer is a three terminal resistor with a sliding contact that forms an adjustable voltage divider. If all three terminals are used, it can act as a variable voltage divider. If only two terminals are used, it acts as a variable resistor or rheostat. Potentiometers are commonly used as controls for electrical devices such as a volume control of a radio. Wheatstone Bridge Wheatstone bridge is an electric circuit used to compare resistances or find the value of an unknown resistance. It consists of four resistances, a battery and a galvanometer. When no current flows through the galvanometer, the bridge is said to be balanced. In a Wheatstone bridge, four resistances P, Q, R and S are joined to form the four sides of a quadrilateral as shown in the figure. These four sides are referred to as arms of the bridge. Four junctions are formed at A, B, C and D. A battery of EMF, epsilon, is connected between the two opposite junctions A and B. A galvanometer G of resistance G ohms is connected between the other two opposite junctions C and D. The galvanometer gets deflected whenever a current passes through it in any direction. It shows zero or null deflection only when various branches of the circuit are as shown figure. Applying the Kirchhoff's first law at any junction C, we get the derivation as shown above. Meter bridge. The meter bridge as shown in figure consists of three thick strips of C1, C2 and C3 made of copper or brass. A manganin wire of uniform cross section and one meter length is stretched tight between the two terminals A and B. A jockey, J, slides over the wire. A graduated meter scale, S, is fixed by the side of the wire for taking the lengths of the wire. The lengths are to be measured from the end where positive terminal of battery is connected. A battery of EMF epsilon, a plug key, K, are connected between the two terminals, A and B. A resistance box, RB, is connected to the gap, G1. The unknown resistance, X, is connected in gap, G2. In between the center C of strip C2 and the jockey J, a galvanometer G and a high resistance H dot R are connected in series. When the jockey is at point D on the wire, it divides the wire into two parts, AD and DB of lengths L1 and L2. As the wire is of uniform cross section, we can have a resistance of AD length of wire which equals R equals L1 sigma and resistance of DB length of wire which is S which is L2 sigma where sigma is the resistance per unit length of the wire. Now, the circuit is exactly similar to a Wheatstone bridge with resistance in R, B equals P.